Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the NBA is Cool podcast, and we are reporting live from Manhattan, Little Rock, Manhattan, Little Rock. Manhattan, Little Rock. A lot of people don't know that that's where it is. Like yeah. They just assume it's in New York, but... But it's know, a borough yeah. in Little Rock. In Little Rock. Yeah. yeah. Not all boroughs are only in Manhattan, no. New York. No. I had no. a student one time whose last name was Burrow. Does he live in New York? Nope. Nope. Lived in Arkansas. Yeah. So that's on you, America. You know, a lot of podcasts bring you podcasts in one particular platform. Yeah. Right? They go, here's the intro. We're from a studio. Great audio quality every yeah. time. No. Not that's, us. That's not how we do business, we ladies got, and gentlemen. We got a, a couple different platforms. Today, we're going from a freaking car. We're in a Jeep, in the rain, in the morning, with an H4N recorder. That's how we do stuff. Yeah. Here's the fun thing. If they know what an H4N is, which means that they care about audio because they've like worked in the industry at least to some level, means they're not listening right now because they have standards and we have not met them. Right. <laughs> Except for right. maybe one episode, which... There we are. So, I think we spent a solid minute and a half talking about... There's your audio quality minute. Yeah, we always recap how um, fluctuating our audio quality is. (laughs) And today, check. Check. Off the list. Okay, so we're we're talking about something big. We're talking about Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook to the Rockets. Tyler, first thoughts, are the Rockets better than they were uh, two weeks ago, whenever they had Chris Paul on the roster? Yes. Okay. Um, but then how do you... Didn't, do they win at all? No. No, okay. no, 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 but, no, no. Okay, question. I'm, yep. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Yep. Are the Warriors the best... The Warriors last year, are when they had Kevin Durant... Yep. Are they better than any team we have in the NBA right now? Are they better than the Clippers and the Lakers? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Who would you say put up the best fight against the Warriors? It was not the Raptors who won it, but against the Warriors with KD, who put up the best fight over the past two years in the playoffs? Uh, actually, you know, last year's Clippers team didn't do a bad job. But well, they went six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if um, you're looking at both years, it's yeah. the full-strength Warriors that you said are better than every team. Yeah, you what what you're trying to get me to say is it's I'm trying the to get you to say the Rockets, but you haven't so, said it yet. So I would say Yeah, technically it's the Rockets, but Chris Paul's knees are done, man. It yeah. was a great it was a great experiment. I think that that the Rockets did the best they could with what they have. I think that that's a successful a successful endeavor. But Westbrook's better than Chris Paul right now because of his youth. And and that's it. Yeah. Like it's not that much better because Chris Paul. As much as people want to say that he's a, a a hard person to work with in the locker room, and I'm sure that he is. I go back to that clip of of Harden like smacking smacking his dab away from him. Yeah. Like get out of here, dude. Get out but, of here. Um, Let's make this into a gift. As much as he is that, he's also a true leader. I think because I don't think. I don't think LeBron's would be friends with a dude like that if he if he didn't have something to offer basketball wise. And yeah, if it's prime, if it's prime Chris Paul, they're awesome. But it's not. He's older. He's much much older. And um, I don't know where Chris Paul's going to end up. But yeah, they're better with Westbrook. What do okay. you think? Um, yeah, I think they're better as well. I, I don't know how the two highest usage rate guys in the entire league, how they mesh. Then again, I wouldn't have seen how Chris Paul – well, we didn't see them mesh. It took two years, and then they hated each other. So I think that this Westbrook thing is temporary. I think it won't last more than three years because both of these guys really enjoy their triple dubs. And so yeah. it's much harder to get a triple double um, when you're on the same team as opposed to by yourself with Steven Adams letting you get all the rebounds. And yeah. so – I think that, which Capella, he's going to get like one and a half rebounds a game as the center because Russell Westbrook's going to be like mellowing him out of the paint. I want to talk about Steven Adams for a little bit. Go. He's great, right? 
He's good. They he, apparently he dipped the last. I didn't watch every game for the Thunder, but he dipped the last few months of the season last year. I can see that. I can totally. See so that. they're they're trying to get rid of Adams. There's no question. Okay. He's, but then again, he's got one of the top. I'd say four or five worst contracts in the league in comparison to what you're getting based on the end of the season. Now, do I think the Celtics could use a big man like Adams? Absolutely. That would be great for the Celtics. They're. I, I feel like they were trying to get him for a while. Really? Um, well, they ended up with Cantor, but then again, Cantor can be a liability on defense. Yeah. Uh, then Cantor yeah. played with Adams at OKC. That's true. So maybe they just need to bring the band back. Maybe they're like the Bash Brothers from Mighty Ducks uh, <laughs> 3, you know? I'm trying to two get or the three. band back together. Was it two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mighty Ducks 2. I'm sure they were in three. And uh, they're just – here's the funny thing. In Mighty Ducks, the guy that plays like the Bash Brother, that like from all three – like all three Mighty Ducks, the one dude that's like beating people up, everybody's scared of because he's huge. That is the short, long haired guy from Daredevil, the TV show. Oh, Lenny. That's that him. is. Yeah. He's never played a strong wow. or athletically capable guy in anything he's ever done except for all three Mighty Ducks. It makes you think like when you're a kid, you'll fall for anything. You think he's actually athletic? Or no. <laughs> He looks like his his best move would be like, hey, can I get that in a venti? Like, that's his most athletic move he does all day. Just going to lay that out. Sorry, whatever your name is, Lenny. Uh, so, here's my thought process. With this trade, and the reason I'm bringing this is it's a mathematical thing. Like, greater than, less than. Right. If you think of the greatest team, if you think of the Warriors over the past two years, okay, they were the best team. Okay, whether they won it or not, they're, them at full strength is a better chemistry, talent, all around. They made it work. Best team. I would say they're better than any team we have this year. We're saying that they should have beat, the Rockets should have beat the Warriors a couple years ago because they got them to Game 7. Chris Paul, they're one Chris Paul hamstring away from beating the Warriors two years ago. Last year they get them six games and just fall apart whenever the Warriors didn't have KD, so but still went six games, which is the more than anybody else went, except for the Raptors that beat them and the Clippers who also went to six games. Okay? Right. So, if we're looking at them, we're saying that team, which has been the greatest challenge to the best team we've seen in the past few years, we are saying that this team is now better than that team, which was arguably the second best team in the league over the past couple well, years. Well, they lost some pieces. They, lost okay. Which piece? So, other than... so you're saying? Oh, okay. So you're saying that the not just the CP Westbrook Swapperino. Yeah. So which piece? I mean, um, they lost some some picks, but those future picks weren't really helping them in the playoffs. No, no, no. The big guy, the big kid. Capella. Um. They still got Ocapella and PJ Tucker and Aaron Gordon. Are we yeah. sure about that? Yeah, okay. they have them right now. They've chopped them. The NBA is cool podcast where Tyler number two knows nothing. Tyler number one knows nothing. <laughs> um, I don't like that you embraced your number one position. I, I don't you had like to. it. It was confusing. I don't like it. You it have to, Tyler. Um, do it for the do it for the people. Thank you guys okay. for coming to our TED talk. Yep. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they still got them right now. They've been shopping them all summer, but I, I'm curious to see if they keep them now that they did the CP or the Westbrook trade. I know that they've lost somebody between... <laughs> they brought back Austin Rivers. They brought back uh, someone else. That Another like guard, I think. Speaking of getting the band back together, Austin yeah. Rivers. Yeah. Um, call it a, don't call it a comeback, LL. So, but Westbrook, like, I don't want to... I think you could... Whenever you think about Westbrook, I think you could quickly go, okay, he's bad. Bad. I don't want any part of it. Yeah. And there's, I think there's a lot of layers to Westbrook because, man, there you you have to say something to to like salute the guy for staying in OKC as long as he did because you know that that guy is a competitor. You know that he he has that want to win. You can see it while he plays. You can say a lot of negative stuff about Westbrook. I am the first to do it. I don't want him anywhere near a Lakers uniform. Blah. Blah. Um, but he's a competitor, and 
he's done a lot for OKC, and I think that they they made their choice. I think that it was a lot like the Shaq Kobe thing, where where OKC had their their choice of hey, do we want KD or Westbrook? And I feel like they kind of went with Westbrook. Well, and they, they did because they didn't. Because KD repeatedly went to the, the, I said central office, they're not a school, um, went to the, the main office and it was like, hey, get him under control. Like, he doesn't need the ball on the floor trying to score. He's bricking everything. Like, right. He doesn't need to take over. Like, the coach has to stand up to him. And they were just like, oh, no, we're not going to do that. It's like that one kid you're afraid is going to go off on you if you, like, <laughs> even correct him a little bit. Like, hey, Johnny, please don't set, you know, Pam's room on fire. Um, I don't know who names their kid Pam. Because I think right. women named Pam just come out 40 years old asking right. to see the manager. Right. So. Or they're really terrible characters on The Office. Terrible? Uh, Hot take here. You don't like Pam Beasley? No. So, Albert? So... I think she's awful. Um, I think she's absolutely awful. Yeah. Like, go back. Go back and watch them all. She's... She's the worst, man. Like, as like, a person or as an actor? or well, like, no, 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 as as the character. Like, she, she puts herself first every single time. Yeah. And... Exactly. Goes to art school, like... Yeah, I mean, does she her, was never picks gym. Never picks Jim up early. Yeah. Anyway... That, that's 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 a whole different thing. Yeah, Pam, um, Pam's. I mean, she's a little bit of a, a little bit of a crazy gal, <laughs> but she's all right in the in the end because she went to Houston for Athletica. What was it called? Athlete. Ath- athlete. 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 Yeah. One of the Lululemon. three. Lululemon. Um. So what's the West look like now? Does that change anything? Yeah. Okay. I think it does. I think that... You're pushing one of the bottom seeds out now, huh? Yeah, You're I mean, because I didn't have... Remember in our last a couple of pods ago, I didn't have the Rockets making the playoffs, I think. I or no, like I had them at either that or like 7th or 8th. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think they make the playoffs. Like, either one of those guys will will them into the playoffs on their own. Um, I just want to know, like... Do they both survive to the end of the season, or does one of them kill the other one? Like, I know they played on the same team, but that was when it was clearly Westbrook. I say clearly. Clearly Westbrook or KD's team at the time, and Harden was a sixth man doing what he can right? with the band. And a friend named Fran. And Fran's Not Ferdinand. Stan. Look at it, a van. Van, van. <laughs> oh. Two trailer park girls go around the outside. <laughs> Which one of our podcasts is just called Eminem Quotes. And we just, like, do what we remember. We never look them up. We just go we remember of Eminem song lyrics. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Totally different podcast section. I, we um, can do an episode on that. I remember the first place I was when I first heard Eminem. Seventh grade. My buddy Daniel brought in his brother's CD. Tell you this. Discman? That, that, no, no, no. He put it into my... I had one of those, like, you know those tower CD players that had, like, a middle section and then two big speakers? Yes. He came in. Yes, I do Click the button. The tray came out. He put it in one of the three CD slots. Casting crowns goes around. Yeah. Third <laughs> this day. This not casting crowns. Third day goes around. And uh, imminent, the real Slim Shady LP goes in. <sighs> and my life was changed forever. Forever. And I tried cursing for two weeks. Didn't work. Didn't work. Felt super well. weird. So I quit that in seventh grade. I was like, you're not good at this, Tyler. This is this is unbelievably yeah. You don't have a good bench press or good cursing uh, <laughs> uh, flow, which I did not. Okay. So I think that I think the West just got tougher again. Like, because, I mean, I think, I think what you have, and I've been kind of thinking about it, I think what you have in the West is you've got a lot of new, a lot of new mixes. Even the Clay staff is new because one, Clay won't be back until February and March, January, I think. But you know, early spring, and you got D'Lo in there, and you've got the rest of the teams different except for Looney. Like you've lost Livingston, you've lost Nicodala. I mean, Draymond's there, but you, Draymond's been a different player every single playoffs and regular season for the past three years. That's true. And so it's like that's even brand new. Everybody else is a brand new duo, 
and they're all power duos, like power couples for sure, but they're all new. So you don't know who's going to mix, who's going to mesh. Um, you know, obviously Hard and Westbrook has a huge upside, but then again, you're, you got two liquid nitrogen tanks being chunked in a suitcase together. That's true. Shaken up, and stirred. And then, uh, but I think what you have in the East is you've got better teams. Like when I Whoa. think of the 76ers, I think of four to five guys. Who are just yes, yeah, we're gonna get it. Um, you got the Celtics, who are a great team that swapped out one good, great. I mean, all-time finisher, all-time head case with a guy who's been toiling away in Charlotte for eight years. All-time you know? handles. Oh yeah, just a great dude with a great team, dude, good leader. And so it's like, how much does leadership matter? How much does being able to throw it between your legs, spin, and hit a fadeaway at the same time matter? <laughs> Also, I feel like the NBA has just hit a total reset button. Mm. And there, there are so many places that have shifted. And for, I, saw, I saw a stat the other day. I don't know how true this was, and I can't cite my reference. But It's on Wikipedia. Probably on, on Wiki. Which means it's fine. Which means it's totally fine. 40% of NBA players were free agents this year. Oh, and, I saw that. Um, it has to be true. We both saw it. Yeah, well, if we both saw it, it's definitely true. Um, I just, I feel like the NBA has hit a reset button, and we really don't know right now. Like, I don't know who's going to come out of the East. I think it's probably Milwaukee. It feels like Milwaukee, and we haven't even talked about them on this podcast yet. But, uh, and then there's the whole other. It, it could be reset again. Because of the trade deadline, you know oh, yeah. that they're not done. Like, I don't see CP3 in in Oklahoma City. No, they for, came out and said he's not going to put on a jersey. So they've they're just blowing the whole thing up. No, oh, yeah, like they're they're not going to bring him in as a leader. They're not gonna um, they're not going to try to have him say and build anything there. He said he wants out. He wants to be on. A, he wants to win a championship. He's not going to do that, helping well, rebuild OKC. He needs some cyborg knees if yeah. he's going to do that. Like, the only so. reason he would do that is if he wanted to move to OKC and then go to games the rest of his life and watch the kids that he helped train. <laughs> like, he's not sticking around. Nope. And so, I think that, I think he's going to be somewhere else. Possibly the Heat. I don't know if yeah, they'll be able to, they'll have to get another team involved. Um, I would love to see him and Jimmy Butler yelling at each other. Okay, I got you. Okay. Which is a more volatile situation? Okay. Harden, Westbrook, or Jimmy Butler, CP3? All four of those guys, on their own, have been known to be hard to play with. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Then you're sticking them, you're pairing them up, possibly. Um, I think, oh gosh. You know you're not going to find a bigger Jimmy Butler fan. Last The last episode we talked about jerseys, I said... I really didn't know. I wasn't sure on jerseys. I think I ended up seeing a Kuzma MLPS jersey. <laughs> Blah. Um, <laughs> now I would say Miami Vice Jimmy Butler jersey. You informed me. They're retiring the Vice jerseys is what Man. they said. Again, I saw it probably on Instagram. So, I mean, so I think knows? it's true. It's got to be that's true. A, that's a Nike thing probably, right? Probably. Yeah, they printed... Whatever they didn't print of the Vice, they printed of the LeBron James 23 jerseys, which is why AD has uh, no, to be number three. That That's why sense. they did it. That checks out. That has to be the reason. That checks out. Um, I didn't answer your question. There's just... I think Jimmy Butler works better. You do? Yeah, Chris Paul, Chris or Westbrook and Harden both have to have the ball. I don't think Jimmy Butler... Jimmy Butler works better off the ball. Okay, I can see that. I think that I think a better team is Arden and Westbrook. Yes. However, I think it's like it's you know, have you ever seen on How I Met Your Mother the the crazy hot scale for girls that Barney does where it's like the hotter she is, the crazier she is. So it's like you want to find this perfect median. That's actually the only thing I've seen from How I Met Your Mother. Well, so it's like in uh Slumdog Millionaire, you saw what you needed to see, which right. brought you to where you are right now. And uh I it's like that. Like, Westbrook and Harden, two offensive juggernauts, but it's, like, the craziest, hottest girl. You're like, wow, they're incredible. Triple doubles. Whoa. But they're Whoa. But they're insane, and they're going to explode. They're going to be, like, 
Like, like at dinner gonna... with your parents the first time they meet them, they're going to be flipping over mashed potatoes talking about how you right. need to put a ring on it. Like, yeah. it's like, chill out. Like, this is not going for that. But I think, while I think they're better, and I think they would even do better, I think that the most, the one that would explode, like, fighting-wise, like, I don't think Jimmy Butler and Chris Paul allow each other to talk to each other the way they talk to people. Right. Like, Jimmy Butler's been known to pop off at his teammates mid-game. Right. So has Chris Paul. Yeah. Like, they both have, and I just don't think either of them is going to receive that very well. And I think that, I just, I, and here's the thing, Jimmy went to Miami for a very specific reason. He did yeah. not go there to win a championship. Right. He went there to be the man and not have to worry about, is this my team? Okay? CP3 swaps the last three years of his deal over to that. It's his, He's going to feel like it's his team as well. Like, I, I, don't, I know he yeah. knew, didn't think the Rockets were his team, but he still felt like he was the leader on the team. Right. Because we all heard that one amazing quote by, uh, oh, what is it, that dude, he coached for a while, he coached Harden for a while, and he just said, he said James Harden was a bad leader. He said he could not lead J.R. Smith to a club with Scott a bottle Brooks? of Hennessy. No, it wasn't Scott <laughs> Brooks. It was, uh, it was an old dude that used to play. Dan Marley, Dan Dan Marley, Marley, Dan Bob Marley, Bob so Marley. Yeah, so was. Uh, I'm I'm making an effort to mention Dan Marley on every single episode. Oh, absolutely. I'm I know who he is, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Perfect in my brain. I know Dan Marley, but do I? But do you really know him? Oh, you. I mean, I know him. That's I've listened question. to TED Talk. Yeah. All right. That's it. <laughs> click. click. Turn the blinker on every time. Uh, yeah, I think it's. I think it's the Houston thing. It's. It's. But Chris be Paul's fine. not there yet. No, so he's not. They're slow rolling. It doesn't look like the Heat want to give up much. I'm afraid. I'm afraid what's going to end up happening. No, his contract. His contract is lunacy. Oh yeah, it's bad. Like for as many good things as Houston has done, that's like the worst thing they've done in years. Well, they had to. That's the thing with this league now. You have to give guys yeah. like that that kind of And I don't money. think it's a big deal that, like, oh, how are they making that much money? They deserve that much money. The problem is the cap space. Here's what I would say to those people. They have a finite skill that other people would pay to watch. Yes. That's all. Think, here, here's the deal. They're one of the 400 best people in their field in the world. Like okay? actors. Like actors. Yes. The 400 best actors. The 400 best YouTubers. The 400 best doctors in the world. Like, let's look at all their salaries and say, comparison to what they bring in financially, which these players are bringing players, selling jerseys, getting movie attention, not movie, but TV attention, all this stuff. For the amount of money they bring their industry, like, look at, okay, do doctors bring that much money to hospitals? Yes. Because yeah. people come in to see them. Right. Did, do players bring money to basketball? Yes. Why does it have to be all in the owner's pockets? I right. think they deserve the money. Where it becomes a problem is that it creates cap space that prevents you from getting other pieces. Sure. And so it's like, for the Warriors, one of their struggles this year is that they have a max contract amount of money that could be applied to players attached to Clay, who is sitting out for over half the year. Right. So that's that's where the rub is, in my okay. opinion. Okay. Okay. And so that's the problem with him trying to get somewhere, putting him somewhere else. Other teams are just like, ah, do we want to lock up that much cap space? And, I mean, they've, I've said it before, um, I think he's one of the top three worst contracts in the league. But then again, I thought Rhett Westbrook was one of the top three worst contracts in the league, and they swapped them. And so it's like, okay, well, who's the other bad contract they could swap with? John Wall. John Wall. He's the number one worst yeah. contract. Yeah. Thunder swap him out. That actually... Does he have less years on his deal? Not I, CP3? I think it's four. Man, we really need to start getting the computer in front of us whenever well, we do these. Well, you were we? driving. Man. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we're bringing you different platforms, so you might not even want accuracy. No. In you're your not podcast. here. You don't come to us for the facts. No. You come to us for the, just the raw, like, Emotion? basketball knowledge. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> I that's fair. That's a question. That's fair. Um,. What if you swap? What if you swap John Wall for Chris Paul? I would as a, if I'm the Thunder, I do that for one thing. I say either one, he's got less years on his contract, so I'm saving forty million. Well, one he's of those much years. younger. He's much younger. 
but he's not like he's not known to develop guys and you're you're pushing young you know what i mean right i would do it for one oh, of two no. reasons either he's, one he's less years on his deal so i'm saving a full year worth of 30 40 mil something like that or two you're tossing him some draft picks that's what I want. That's what the Thunder want. Like, give me them draft. They were trying to, yeah, exactly. They're trying think... to give Westbrook this, and they, I think that, I think the Wizards know, like, we're hot trash. I think right. they're done with the Wall era. I know they had to give him a max contract, but then he slipped on a banana peel in his house and right. hurt himself, and he's yeah, out. What? I don't know, man. He tripped on a. Didn't he do something like at his stairs? Yeah, he heard it at his house walking. He like slipped on a stair. Or something. Yeah. See, here's the problem with that. You're a pro athlete. Yeah. And you've got one of the biggest contracts in the world, so yeah, make up a better story. Yeah, definitely not true. That that didn't fell at the club, um, and so I think that they do it if it gets them picks. Because I think right now Sam Presti is saying, "How can I take this and keep swapping it out for more little pieces?" And if he can just keep taking these like worst contracts in the league and swapping them out and pulling a couple draft picks. Why not? More power to him, man. Yeah, Sam P. Sammy P. He he is really good at drafting players in the upper part of the draft that become incredible superstars. He is not great at keeping them on his team for longer periods of time. Have you heard his TED Talk? I am giving it. <laughs> this is me, Sam Presti. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Uh, Fantastic. All right, man, I'd say this is probably one of our top... 12 podcasts we've probably, ever done? Probably top 12. This is yeah. podcast number 10? <laughs> probably top 12 yeah. of 10. Yeah. I'd say this. Of the people that do this podcast, we have the top two worst contracts in the That's league. That's true. No question. <laughs> Absolutely no question. So hot right now. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming into the NBA School podcast. We appreciate you. For all your moderately... Hot takes. Like, right. we're pretty close to when the stories break within the week or two. Mild. Mild, mild takes. I'd say we're like a mild hot sauce from Taco Bell. <laughs> it's, it's like you've got something on there, but it's not really kicking anything. Five stars, please. Yeah, rate us five stars on the podcast. If you listen this long, well, I mean, you've literally given us, you know, 27 minutes of your time. Yeah. Might as well give another 12 seconds and help our podcast get recognized by yeah. other people that are as amazing yeah. as you. Tell your friends. Oh, text it to him. Tell your aunts and uncles. Yeah, and about tell us. tell James Harden. Tell lookalike Matthew Creesman. Tell everybody that you want to tell about it. Maybe your is that him? Is that Crease? I don't know. We're that. at the Little Rock Air Force uh, base. Base, and we're and like, <laughs> what is this guy? Is that Matthew Air, Creesman? Airport. We're just gonna talk about people you don't know and how they yep. kind of look like people we see in real life. A lot of inside jokes. A lot of it. Thank you guys for coming. We appreciate y'all coming to our TED Talk. Yep.